Hi everyone, so we're going to talk about hepatic Whitlow. Uh, hepatic Whitlow is a infection caused by the herpes, herpes simplex virus, either the HSV1 or HSV2 um, subtype. And its transmission is usually via direct physical contact, um, either by autogenous inoculation, which means uh, the patient comes in contact with a lesion um, in another part of the body, for example, if they have oral herpes or their genital herpes, or it could be via um, direct exogenous infection. So they come into contact with lesions on, uh, for example, uh, another person who is already infected with uh, HSV. And commonly it happens in children, uh, especially if they suck on their fingers and as a result come to contact with um, cold sores. Uh, and another group would be dentists or respiratory therapists uh, they frequently come into oral secretions that may or may not um, uh, co contain the HSV virus itself. Um, this is more prominent especially if they do not wear gloves um, as well. So once they are exposed to this virus, um, it basically infects the epidermal, dermal and subcutaneous tissue and it can spread retrogradely to the dorsal root ganglion and it can remain latent in the dorsal root ganglion itself. Subsequently, it can actually reactivate and lead to recurrence of um, this infection. Infection typically, typically occurs 2 to 20 days after exposure. So as you can see in these images, um, there are uh, vesicles um, that are present on the finger and oftentimes it's multiple uh, and they tend to coalesce with time. So initially, there could be one vesicle but after a few days, um, more vesicles could crop up and it could um, coalesce or group together to form a large honeycomb-like boule, as you can see here. Um, and generally, um, it, there's a red or uh, erythematous base around the vesicles. Uh, and sometimes it can also spread proximally and involve the nail bed as well. So in terms of diagnosis, it's a clinical diagnosis uh, with the appearance of uh, vesicles and also history of exposure. So if a patient has had um, oral or genital herpes and subsequently they develop this infection in their fingers, uh, it's suggestive of hepatic wheat low. Um, most characteristically, they are grouped and non pruritic or purulent vesicles uh, with a red or erythematous base as we mentioned before. There's a few phases um, to this infection. Uh, commonly, there's a prodromal phase where patients of, often experience pain and tingling of fingers before they see any vesicles. And after that phase, um, patients can develop localized, localized pain, redness, and also swelling um, along the top and also the lateral aspect of the finger. Um, and less commonly, sometimes patients can also develop fever uh, and also lymphadenopathy as well. If there's any uh, uh, suspicion to the diagnosis, um, a clinician can also unroof and swap the physicals to obtain samples and it can perform a Zang test um, to look for characteristic balloon giant cells under the microscope. It's also important to differentiate uh, hepatic wheat low from other infections such as phelon, which is a digital pulp abscess, or peronychia which is a bacterial abscess in the nail fold and also cellulitis. This has implications on management as we will talk about later. In terms of treatment, uh, this condition is generally self-limited and resolves itself within two to four weeks. Um, and as such, the mainstay of treatment is symptomatic relief and to prevent any secondary infection. This will be sufficient for most patients. However, in patients who are immunocompromised or if the infection does not improve with symptomatic relief, uh, then antivirals uh, such as acyclovir or famcyclovir or valcyclovir could be initiated, uh, ideally within 48 hours. And these antivirals uh, essentially reduces viral replication and shortens the duration of infection. It's also important to note that unlike phelon and peronychia, surgical treatment is not indicated uh, as it can lead to severe complications such as bacterial superinfection, systemic spread, or even hepatic encephalitis. Uh, the rate of recurrence is 30 to 50%, generally from reactivation of uh, the latent virus in the dorsal root ganglion. It's also important to counsel patients that until the epidermal lesions are healed, uh, they remain infectious and they should adopt uh, protective measures such as using gloves or even 
covering the lesions with a uh, with a uh, clean dressing as well could also prevent infection to uh, to other people. So just a few questions to reiterate what we just discussed. So the first question is a 50-year-old healthcare worker presents to your clinic with the following skin rash. Which investigations could help to confirm the diagnosis? And the answer here um, would be C. So the roofing the lesion and to send the fluid for staining and microscopy uh, using the Zhang stain uh, could help to confirm the diagnosis uh, if there's a presence of balloon or giant cells under the microscope. Second question is, uh, what's the chance of recurrence of hepatic wheat low? Uh, and if you recall, we mentioned that it was 30 to 50%. So the answer here would be C, 40%. And the last question is, uh, is a previously healthy 24-year-old dentist uh, and presents a day after the onset of burning pain, swelling, and multiple blisters over the left index finger. Uh, there's a history of a hunting trip through a forestry of poison oak. Uh, physical examination shows swelling and redness of the pulp space of the right index finger, and there's also multiple 2 mm non pruritic vesicles. So the question asks, in addition to supportive therapy, which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? I can pause the video here and have a, um, another read of the question. And the answer here is E, oral acyclovir. As you can see, the question uh, mentions the 2 mm non pruritic vesicles, uh, around the pulp space of the right index finger, and this is suggestive of hepatic wheat low. Um, and in addition to symptomatic relief, we did mention before that oral acyclovir uh, can help to reduce the duration of symptoms. Thank you.